This is a presentation of the effects of noise stress on fertility. I'm Akira Roberto. I'm Tamara Dudu. And I'm Vanessa Revelo. The problem we will be focusing on in this study are the effects of noise pollution of pregnant women along with reproductive organs, including ovaries and testicles, as well as the, the declining birth rate in areas that have higher noise frequencies. National literature review. Noise stress plays a negative role in fertility. This is shown by the research done by Gossam Saki and his colleagues. Time and time again after their research, they proved that the increased levels of frequencies in the hormones in the rats showed a correlation. The, the levels of hormones in the rats, such as FSH and LH, decreased dramatically when the frequency level was raised. Current, the current studies that have been done are, have only been done on rats. Um, also, effects of oxidative stress contributed to tissue damage, and oxidative stress was increased due to the high frequencies. The oxidative stress also has been tested by Alvatin and Ursula and her colleagues. Um, they proved that oxidative stress contributes to tissue damage in also humans, and time and time again, after past research has been done, this has been proven as well. New technology also produces a substantial amount of noise that causes medical issues with fertility in both men and women. It affects the testosterone and the ovaries. That research was done by Luan Zhu and his colleagues. So the initial purpose of this study is to test whether or not noise pollution affects human reproductive systems, excuse me, human reproductive systems as they do in rats. So now we're at the research question hypothesis. The research question is, how will noise stress affect the reproductive function of males and females? In this question, we want to specifically target males and females who are the subjects that have not been um, tested on yet. The, the focus of past research has been solely on rats, and we want to discover the effects of noise stress on humans now. Therefore, our hypothesis would be, if human beings are exposed to various amounts of intensity and frequencies, then the proper functioning of reproductive system will be compromised. That is something that we want to avoid in the future. So, research methodology. We're going to request 50 volunteers, and hopefully they'll sign up and we'll make sure that everything will be um, provided to them, the document, proper documentation will be given. We're asking for 25 males and 25 females just to ensure the accuracy of our study. Also, within the age group, we will be looking for um, males and females the age of 25 to 28 years old, just to make sure that the vitality of um, their sperm and any type of other um, things that we'll be needing in the experiment are accurate. Also, um, to ensure safety for the subjects, the maximum dust will we'll be exposing them to without any harm is 85 decibels or less. Anything higher than 85 decibels will cause harm to the subjects, and we are trying to avoid that. The roles and responsibilities of the researchers, so the respective persons um, consent of the subjects, we will make sure all legal matters are taken care of and subjects are aware. Um, we are not biased over gender, race, nor economic status, and the benefits will outweigh the risks. Society will benefit rather than doing harm. The impact of the research for the community is that noise has effects on those that are pregnant and trying to conceive. With society, it's for individuals to stay in areas that have a lower concentration of noise. And we will create solutions to help with the decline in birth rates in relation to the problem. So the purpose of our study was to make sure that noise does not affect pregnancy and fertility around the world. We want to make sure that sperm count, motility, and morphology of ovaries does not become dwindled because of the stress of noise. Thank you for watching our presentation. And this concludes our video.